Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to talk about what is a generation two virtual machine in Azure, and then what is trusted launch. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead and like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of new videos. When we think about virtual machines, obviously a virtual machine is a set of virtualized hardware that's presented to the guest operating system that runs inside that virtual machine. And what we have up to generation two is the generation one. So when I think about generation one, and I'll do this in kind of gray, it's the old one, there's a certain set of virtualized hardware presented to that guest operating system, which therefore has certain capabilities. It's BIOS based. So it's using BIOS. It has a IDE controller. So it has IDE, and we're using that for both the boot disk, and we're also using that, if there is one, for the temp disk. Now it does then have a SCSI controller, which is what's used for any data disks I add to it. That's what lets me do that hot add and remove. So that's what we had with generation one. And if we jump over and take a look at a gen one virtual machine, we can see all of that. So if I go and look at my generation one VM, what we can see is a number of different pieces of information. So firstly, if I look at the BIOS mode, we can see it says legacy, i.e. this is using BIOS. Also because of that, I can't use things like secure boot. That is unsupported. Secure boot is that secure handoff between the hardware, i.e. UEFI, and then the kernel, the drivers, all of that to stop any rootkits getting in the middle of it. As part of that as well, therefore, we see we have uh, IDE controllers. So I have that IDE controller present over here on the hardware sky. And we do also have a SCSI controller for those data disks. And what we actually see if we look at the disks is sure enough, hey, I can see a virtual disk over here. So that's actually gonna be the data disk that I have attached. That's connected to the SCSI control. I can see SCSI port three. But then the boot disk and the temporary disk, they're connected to the IDE controller. Now we see this virtual HD ATA device. Now it's not as bad as it seems. Even though IDE controllers are typically an emulated device. So what that would mean is it impacts the performance actually of the disk. Well, with Hyper-V, once you have the integration services installed, it actually shifts it to a synthetic driver anyway. So there isn't really a performance difference between the IDE and the SCSI, but realize those generation ones, the boot, the temp drive, they're connected to that IDE controller is using um, SCSI is synthetic, that lets us do that hot add and remove. So it's BIOS based. So now we have this option for Gen 2. Now remember the important point about this, this is about the virtualized hardware that is presented to the guest operating system. This is different from the underlying physical hardware that goes through new generations. For example, there were newer processors. Those newer processors have newer instruction sets, maybe higher performance. Those are exposed by different versions of SKUs. We see like uh, an EV3, an EV4, an EV5. Those versions on the VM SKU, well, they're talking about, hey, the performance is improving. Different instruction sets are available because the different generations of physical hardware are changing. So the VMs absorb some of that from a processor and maybe other bandwidth, etc. We're talking about the virtualized hardware that is presented to the guest operating system, which is completely different from that underlying physical hardware. Now, many VM SKUs support generation two. Now, the big deal about this, so generation two, well, this is based on UEFI. Now, that UEFI does a number of things, and I'll actually go back and show this before we change over. Because this is BIOS based, that boot, the OS, has a certain disk configuration on it. When I use UEFI, the disk has a different disk configuration. 
This is why I can't just easily switch from a Gen 1 to a Gen 2. The disk configuration is completely different. There's different drivers being loaded because, hey, now with UEFI, I only have a SCSI controller. I do not have an IDE controller. So now that boot, temp, and data all boot from that synthetic SCSI controller. Now, because I'm now UEFI, what really gets interesting is this now adds support for things like a virtual TPM, a trusted platform module. Those together also now give me um, support for things like virtualization-based security that I can run inside the guest operating system. And if I think about features of the operating system, things like secure boot, well, these together add in this feature, trusted launch. And trusted launch is saying I can configure as part of creating the virtual machine when it's Gen 2 to say, hey, I want to leverage that virtual TPM. I want to leverage this other types of functionality to give me that secure handoff from the UEFI to the guest operating system that's gonna check, hey, the signing of the different kernel, the drivers, everything else, to make sure there's no rootkits been introduced in between them. So we can go and look at this. So if we jump over again, so before I leave this old, remember this is the old VM, if I quickly just opened up, well, firstly, device manager, so device manager, you can see, hey, yeah, look, I actually have an IDE controller. This is that emulated controller, but it does quickly shift over to synthetic once the integration services load. But from a disk configuration, this is really the important part. We have this standard system partition because this is BIOS-based operating system. So now I'm gonna shift over to my UEFI virtual machine. So if I quickly get over here, so now I'm on my nice little UEFI machine. So from this right here, I can see, hey look, my BIOS mode is now UEFI. So it's using that new type of boot. And because of that, and because I turned on trusted launch, I have secure boot state on. So those are really the, the key things we're gonna see when I use that generation two virtual machine and turn on trusted launch. Now, I don't have to turn on trusted launch, but you should. There's not a downside with doing this. So we get that secure boot state on. Now, if we look to the components again, for like storage, well, there is no IDE now. If I was to look at device manager, there is no IDE controller at all. There's no IDE controller here. It's only those SCSI disks. And just to kind of stress that point of the differences, notice the disk configuration, well, it's completely different. Now we have this EFI system partition, and then we have kind of the boot drive for the operating system itself. Now I am showing this on Windows, but this is supported on Linux as well. I can use Windows and Linux for this. But now the key point is for these Gen 2 virtual machines, I have these capabilities, so I can now get this nice secure option for this. Now in terms of actually using this, if I was just to go to virtual machines and say create a virtual machine, there are many images today that support generation two. So if I was to, for example, just pick here, notice it's doing Ubuntu Gen 2. But likewise, I could also support Ubuntu Gen 1. So the same VM SKU can have both Gen 1 and Gen 2, providing it does support Gen 2 at all. The newer SKU support Generation 2, and they have that capability. So I can pick, do I want Gen 1 or Gen 2? And then if I pick Gen 2, I have under security type, I can pick trusted launch virtual machine. So that's what's gonna give me this nice protection and give me that, hey, Stephen talked about secure boot, um, virtual trusted platform module. So I get those capabilities from there. Now I wanna stress a few key points. There is no price difference 
between Gen 1 and Gen 2. Like they cost exactly, I'm paying for the VM SKU. I don't pay differently for Gen 1 or Gen 2. I do not pay differently if I turn on Trusted Launch. There is no price difference between these. In the daily running of the virtual machine, there is no performance difference between them. I may see a slightly quicker deployment, a slightly quicker boot with a Gen 2 because of that UEFI and the SCSI controller, but it, it, it's minimal. I, I wouldn't worry about it for that reason. I focus on Gen 2 because it opens up that virtual TPM, it gives me that trusted launch. I can have those virtualization-based securities I can go and turn on inside the operating system, which gives me things like Credential Guard. It gives me these nice containers through there. And as I said, because the disk configuration is different, there is no upgrade. I can't convert from a Gen 1 to a Gen 2. Likewise, if I've created a Gen 2 and did not turn on Trusted Launch, there's not an easy way to just turn on Trusted Launch. It's a redeploy because once again, there's kind of a stamp inside the image that says, hey, I am Trusted Launch capable. There's this whole host compatibility layer that I can't inject into this to add that secure boot support. So it's saying I would have to actually redeploy and create a new OS image to go from Gen 1 to Gen 2, or even just a Gen 2 and want to turn on Trusted Launch. But there is no downside with picking Gen 2 and turning on Trusted Launch. There's no runtime impact, there's no cost implications, there's no performance implications. It's a no-brainer. If I create my own images and put them in the shared image gallery, there is a metadata change that I have to make on the image to say, hey, I'm supported trusted launch. If you create your own images, you can go and turn that on. That's really all I have to do. Um, in terms of support for this, um, it is both Windows. So if I, if I think about the trusted launch, it's Windows uh, 2016 and above, Windows 10 and above, and Linux kernel 5.4 and above. Those all have that secure boot functionality supported within them. So I'm going to have those capabilities. You also, when I have a Gen 2 UEFI, I can boot from a bigger than 2 terabyte boot disk. So that's another change there. But that's really it. I guess the only thing I would say is I can turn on that virtualization-based security that is not enabled by default. That is saying I would actually, inside the guest operating system itself, so if I was in here, I could search for um, security. So I had Windows security. And then inside there you have device security. And then you have core isolation. And then you can turn on memory integrity. So that's what's using that virtualization basic. It's going to turn that on. And then I can leverage that by different types of functionality like Credential Guard. So that is not enabled by default, but you absolutely could go and enable it. And once I turn that on, that's where you can see that virtualization-based security is running. So that is also available when I use that Gen 2 virtual machine and turn on that trusted launch so I can leverage um, those features as well. There is also an integration with Defender for Cloud, what was Azure Security Center. Um, it can be the free tier. And what I can now have is a guest attestation to Defender for Cloud. This runs inside the virtual machine. It looks at the measurements of the boot and stores it in the TPM. So it's using that TPM to do a measurement of the security posture moving through the boot process. And then I can compare the policy that I can have through Defender via the attestation agent that it pushes in and push that to Defender so I can get a view of, hey, my security posture. Now, if I have Defender enhanced security, then if that attestation fails, I can get alerts. So that is part of the paid functionality of Defender for Cloud. But that's really it. Um, Wanted to make sure people were aware of this. Again, no downside with picking the Gen 2, no downside with turning on the trusted launch. This is not a performance difference. 
it's a security difference. It's giving me a much better security posture. Remember, it's completely different from VM SKUs. Those V3, V4, V5, whatever, that's about the underlying physical hardware on which the VMs run. Generations are about the virtualized hardware that is presented to the guest operating system that runs inside the virtual machine. So that's it. Uh, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.